to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. We're so pleased to welcome part of the 2NURFM family here from the University of Newcastle, Acting Director of Advancement, Rosemary O'Neill-Thompson. Now, Rose, we're talking about the new Professor's Lecture Series. It's in full uh, swing at the University of Newcastle. We've already had our first one, haven't we? We did indeed. We kicked off in um, in May with Professor Sandeep Gopalan, our new Dean of Law. And we're very excited about this community engagement initiative because it brings our professors among the people and and their colleagues. And we gathered together at the museum where we'll be having the next one, in fact, the whole series. Uh, And look, it was full. It was really a wonderful, intimate arrangement in which uh, community members can ask very direct questions. And we're very excited to bring our new head of school of biomedical science and pharmacy, Professor Daryl Knight, to deliver the next one. Can you give me a little bit of background to his career? Yes, look, he's an expert in respiratory disease with a focus on asthma and pulmonary did I say that right? Pulmonary um, fibrosis. And look, he, he was a West Australian born and bred and he did his Bachelor of Science Honours uh, in pharmacology and then followed it with a PhD in, uh, in medical research over at the University of Western Australia. But I suppose his career development, if you like, has taken place in Canada before he came to us. And we're quite happy with that because we love the global footprint that's now uh, descending, if you like, it many senior positions in the university. He was the Canada Research Chair at the University of British Columbia in this respiratory disease place. And I suppose of importance um, is that he was the Associate Director also of the UBC James Hoag Eye Capture Centre, which focused on cardiovascular and pulmonary research. So it's a great find and a great appointment. And we welcome him to the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, this association, a strong association for you with Canada, with your research into stem cells and what you've been doing. Is there a a similar environment for what they are experiencing in your research in Canada to what we have here in Australia? At the University of British Columbia, where I I trained, there is a very strong link with, um, in particular, the blending of cardiovascular and, and pulmonary disease. The, uh, the centre where I was based actually uh, ranked third in the world for its impact on COPD research. Um, where we benefit from is we have a very large stem cell uh, group and centre, not necessarily focused on lungs, but they were able to give us such strong support and uh, interaction that allowed us to really try and understand how these cells contribute to the repair of lung diseases which stem from um, COPD, which we're all familiar with, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis, all sorts of lung diseases. Um, I will say, however, we're still still very much in the infancy of how these cells work. So there's still a long way we can go and a long way we can advance for what we can do with the stem cells research and the area, especially uh, for asthma? Correct. And, and, you know, I I like to view it in terms of when you cut your skin, for example, you have a wound that heals. And some people, they get a scar that doesn't resolve. And in fact, in some cases, it gets bigger and bigger. Well, if you think about that in the lungs, that's what drives the, the, the changes to the lung architecture in asthma, as well as pulmonary fibrosis. It's just a wound that doesn't heal. And you need stem cells to heal that properly. And so what we're trying to understand is how those stem cells get to those areas and can repopulate it and then reseed it and help it heal, not just heal to, to cover the wound, but heal properly to give the lung normal structure and function. Now, Professor Knight, at the University of Newcastle lecture, the Professor's Series, what will you be talking about and expanding on with your talk on stem cells? Well, pretty much just that. I'm going to focus on asthma. I'm going to focus on uh, and pulmonary fibrosis, which are, which are two diseases that seem to be at the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of age. Asthma starts in childhood. Pulmonary fibrosis normally starts in or gets diagnosed in middle age. Um, but they have very different uh, pathological uh, processes, I think. And so I'm going to try and delve into how we can use stem cells to to fix both of those diseases. And the, and the reason why we need to do this is simply that there is no therapy for pulmonary fibrosis and the drugs we have to treat asthma treat the symptoms but not the disease. So we really need to understand how those diseases um, perpetuate themselves and then how we can heal the wounds that occur uh, when, when someone has an attack. You mentioned there's a difference between the two. Is there a synergy but that, that flows through your research for them? 
Well, that's what I'm hoping to find mm. out. I mean, asthma is more of a disease of the airways, whereas pulmonary fibrosis is more of a, a disease of the lung tissue. Mm. But the, the, the pathology shares many similarities. And so I'm hoping that the applicability of finding stem cells for one of them will transfer across to the other, but also to any other to any other disease of any other organs that involves uh, remodeling and changing to the architecture. So kidney fibrosis, liver fibrosis, all of those sort of diseases can be treated with stem cells if we know what we're doing with them. Are you finding that the treatment and the curing that you're trying to do in the two different areas, is it coming out through the same result in both? Not really. Or is there differences? Well, we, we don't know enough yet to say mm. anything about that. I mean, one of the issues that we have in the lung is that we really don't know what the stem cells are that live there. Mm. We know that they come from the bone marrow, but we don't really have a good idea of what's actually there. We've got, we've, we've got some data that, to suggest that we've got one of them, but there's multiple different stem cell populations and niches, and it's very hard to identify them. And... and the only way we're going to do it, I must say, is to get human lung tissue. Mm. And from surgeries, from uh, donors who have um, you know, unfortunately passed away, all sorts of things. But we, that's the only way we're going to understand this, is to get access to, to human lung tissue. It's definitely an area we'd like to find more about. We get a, an opportunity and a snapshot of that through the lecture series. When will it be, Rose? And, and we'd like to invite those in the listening area who are listening to come along and be part of it. It's this week on Wednesday. Um, look, we've got a start time of 6.15, um, gathering to, to commence the lecture at actually 6.30. Um, there'll be refreshments after the... We sort of have wine and cheese after the um, lecture, and this allows to go beyond the formal Q&A uh, to mingling and actually having a, a conversation with That's Professor That's another Knight. special part of it, the Q&A, which is going to be fascinating to hear what questions you receive on the night. Yeah, absolutely. I'm mm. looking forward to any of the questions that the public has to offer. I will just say one also, one thing also, that it will finish before the origin kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's important, yeah, being Wednesday, that's for sure. Now, Rose, if people would like more details on how they can express their interest in coming along or, or to reserve their interest to be there, how can we go about doing that? Um, well... If they just simply email corporate-relations at newcastle.edu.au or pick the phone up to the university. Also on the web front web page under events are all the details about it. Uh, we'd just love to know if they're intending to come. If they decide at the last minute, that's also fine, but we'd love to be able to give them a glass of wine if they do. Um, look, the, the topic that Daryl is speaking on is the promise of stem cells in the treatment of chronic lung disease. Is it all just hot hair? And I know there's often discussion in the community as families grapple with as asthma and then in later life with pulmonary diseases. So this is the moment. This is the moment to, when you've got a world-class expert mm. to access, to come along and, and pose some of those questions, whether they be what appear to be simple issues in a family context, right through to colleagues who want to avail themselves of his expertise. And we'll have more details with our next one, which is coming up in a month's time, as we invite back from the University of Newcastle, the Acting Director of Advancement, Rosemary O'Neill-Thompson, and our guest this morning, Professor Daryl Knight.